For regular videos on ancient cultures and forgotten civilizations, please subscribe. Somerset, England, 1927. 49-year-old artist Catherine Maltwood has been commissioned to draw a map outlining the adventures of the Knights of King Arthur. Thanks to the recent invention of the airplane, she is able to obtain the earliest aerial photographs of the area. While studying them, she suddenly notices a figure in the landscape. She noticed what appeared to be a landscape lion. It just sort of reared up at her, quite literally. And she examined this and wondered whether this was the Leo figure of the Zodiac. Then she saw next to it this large, giant figure, which she felt was part of some kind of collective of landscape effigies that had been laid down by ancient hands. And one by one, she found that they actually represented the 12 signs of the Zodiac. Glastonbury Zodiac is so large that you can only really see it from the sky. The Zodiac signs are marked by rivers, streams, roads, field boundaries. The shapes look so much like man-made features that Maltwood published a book about them and called it the Temple of the Stars. So here we have some ideas that go back to the 1930s, but certainly not in scientific or archaeological circles. Catherine Maltwood's ideas about the Glastonbury Zodiac, which she believed was created by the Sumerians, yeah, apparently the Sumerians were in Glastonbury, and which she connected to the Holy Grail in Arthurian legend and her astrological beliefs, didn't actually achieve much of any attention until 1969, when an article by Mary Kane in the magazine Gandalf's Garden popularized it. Mary Kane made alterations to Maltwood's scheme, changing the outlines of Capricorn, Libra, and Leo, turning Scorpius upside down, and adding the image of a monk to Gemini. Then from there, it made its way into ancient astronaut suppositions, which rejected Maltwood's Sumerian dating and pushed the Glastonbury Zodiac back into the early Stone Age. There are three main weaknesses in the Glastonbury Zodiac hypothesis. The first is one that you may be thinking of already, and which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Just as anyone can look up into the sky at a group of stars and note how they resemble a shape meaningful to the onlooker, so the same can be done with lines and dots seen in an aerial view of a landscape. Anyone can see patterns in random objects. In fact, it's a human propensity. And the shapes that are seen depend on the cultural expectations of the viewer. Hey, look at that. It's SpongeBob. And here's Patrick. And Mr. Krabs. I'm sure you see my point. It's a Rorschach test. Images extracted in this way do not exist objectively, but merely in the minds of those who see them. Second, the shapes do not in fact match all that well with the signs of the Zodiac. In the Zodiac, Cancer is not a ship, Libra is not a dove, and Aquarius is not a phoenix. The third weakness in the hypothesis is fatal. Catherine Maltwood used modern features in the landscape to establish the details of her images, including roads, drainage ditches, and paths that can be demonstrated not to have existed before early modern times. She even used signs of agricultural activity in her own time, including a haystack, which she saw as the Eye of Capricornus. Paths dating back to Neolithic times do exist here? but none of them were used in Maltwood's outlines of the constellations. While it was received with much skepticism, proponents say there is ample evidence around the region to suggest these formations have been created by artificial means, and that almost every field and hill in the area has been modified in some way. One of the most important ones is called Ponter's Ball. Now this is a large, mile-long, pointed earthwork, which is exactly where the Capricorn effigy's horn is in the Zodiac. Punter's Ball is a linear earthwork about 15 feet high that was built either as a territorial boundary or as a dike when this was swampland. Some archaeologists have dated it to the 3rd century BCE. Others have proposed a medieval date in the 12th century. 
I've seen no evidence presented to suggest it comes from the Stone Age. What we have here is an attempt to date the entire zodiac by appealing to the presumed antiquity of a tiny portion of the whole. Since it's already been established that Maltwood's zodiac effigies incorporate elements from many different time periods, a Stone Age horn for Capricornus, even if definitively demonstrated, would do nothing to unify the date for the creation of all the signs.